everyone, it's Sherry Carroll for SimonSaysStamp.com and I have a project today using some Faber-Castell products. I'm going to start off making a background and I'm going to start with my double scoop gelatos and this one color is called Snow Cone. And so what I've done is I've shaved off some of my gelatos just using my X-Acto knife here. And I'm going to create a glaze to put on the background of my card. So I kind of want to just smash this down a little bit. Um, it's really easy. It's like a heavy paste or a, a light crayon. It's kind of got like, it feels like wax in there, but you can see it kind of smashes down a little bit. So I'm using the Faber-Castell glaze and this is going to create a mixture for me and it'll seal this color into my card. So I'm just going to give that one good scoop out. I might need more, so I'll go ahead and put that back in. But I'm going to start mixing my gelatos right into that glaze. Oh, I have a paintbrush hair in there. And this will give me really great concentrated color. You can see it's starting to make like a paste. That uh, gelatos is breaking down with the fluid that's from the glaze. You can make this really concentrated color or really light color if you want. And I'm just going to get this really mixed up well. I'm, I'm going to press down on the leftover gelatos that's on my tray here just to make sure that I get that really well mixed in. I'm going to add a little bit more glaze. I want this a little bit lighter. So I'll try to get a little blop out here without making too much of a mess. It's really fun to figure out what your mediums will do. And Faber-Castell has a whole line of stuff um, that you can use on your card making or art journaling or even scrapbooking. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this glaze. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and use my palette knife. I'm going to kind of clear off some of that there and just get this nice glaze here. And I'm just going to use the back of my palette knife and I'm just going to start adding some color randomly. Now what this will do when I'm said and done with it is it's going to resist the color that I put on top. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes and then I'll be back to add some more color. Okay, so this is pretty much dry. Um, it still has a little bit of a shine to it. You can kind of see that shine. Um, I have some good glops over here. I'm assuming that that's not going to be dry all the way to the paper. I did shoot this with my heat gun a little bit to see if I could get it going a little bit. But I'm going to start adding color with some more gelatos and I'm just going to kind of go over some of these areas knowing that it's going to catch in some and maybe not in other areas and you're probably thinking, oh Sherry, what are you doing? Um, but I love contrasting colors, so blue and orange, since they're opposites on the color wheel, they're great contrasting colors. That's how you can tell your opposites. Okay, so I'm just adding just color around in those areas. And the next thing I want to do is to go ahead and spray this down with some water. And I just have a large sprayer that I keep around. And I'm going to start moving that color around with a paintbrush. Let me grab one that I like. Um, I can also use my finger if I want just to kind of move that color around. But I'm going to try to fill in all these areas and you can kind of see the brush strokes that are going on uh, up here at the top. It looks pretty cool. And I wasn't sure, like I had some clumps of that gelato still in the, in my paste or my um, glaze and I wasn't sure if that was going to kind of react with the water. It's possible it still might. But as you can see I'm just kind of just smushing around, just kind of pressing that color right into the paper. And this is the Tim, Col Tim Holtz watercolor paper that I'm working with here. I wanted a really nice um, strong paper that can withstand all this water and glaze and such. So now it's starting to fill in pretty good. It never looks pretty at this stage, so just bear with me. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more of this lighter yellow here. Oh, and these colors that I'm using are mango and tangerine. Real sunshiny bright colors. So just a little stronger color in there. You can add the gelatos wet, you know, on wet paper, or you can add it on dry paper. Either way, it just reacts with the water. Okay, I'm going to give this a chance to dry, and then I'm going to wipe down my glazing areas. Okay, this is not quite dry yet, but I couldn't wait, so I'm going to go ahead and start kind of wiping this down. And you can see where that has resisted, and you get color in between those brush strokes and stuff. Um, so I'm just cleaning off where the areas of that glaze were. And this is just kind of giving me a really cool abstracty looking background. Is abstracty a word? I don't think so. If you want, you can go ahead and moisten your towel a little bit. I'm sure it's going to probably lighten up some of my color as I go around here. Um, but I really like how I can see that color in the background. It almost looks like I put the glaze on top of the color. So I'll go ahead and show you up close. Um, it's just a really cool look to that. So I'm going to let this kind of dry flat and I'm going to get going on some stamping. Another one of my favorite Faber-Castell um, products are the Pitt Artist pen and these are the big brushes. They come in smaller ones as well. You can buy these individually or in a three pack that's kind of ombre looking. But what these are, are they're India ink. And India ink is much different than your Copics or your water base inks. Meaning that you have a little bit of time to play with them before they dry and when they dry they're permanent. So I'm going to show you a couple things that you can do with these. I have stamped my image. Hopefully he's pretty dry. Um, I'm going to go ahead and blot that off. I have gessoed some watercolor paper first, and the reason why I gessoed it is because it really works well with the uh, artist big brush pens. Yep, I'm getting a little bit of ink off of him, but he looks pretty good. I've been dying to play. These are the Tim Holtz uh, birds, and I've been dying to play with these guys. But what I can do with the artist pen that you can't really do with the other ones with the gesso is that I can go ahead and lay down some color and I can use my finger or a brush and I can go ahead and smear that out. So they're blendable while they're wet and they're permanent when they're dry. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding some orange to this guy down at the bottom and I can blend that up. See how it just kind of gets a little bit lighter. And I might be mixing in with that ink a little bit. Uh, I might need to shoot this with my heat gun just slightly to get that going. Um, but I can move this around with my finger and start blending my color. I am going to shoot this really quick with my heat gun and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I've pretty much dried that now so I can go ahead and start adding my color. Um, another thing that you can do with these markers is when you add color, once it dries, you can go ahead and add more color on top and it gets darker as you go. So I'm just going to kind of get a little bit of orange going on in the bottom area here, kind of push it up so it fades out a little bit, and then I can blend that in with some yellow. So once that dries, I can go back in and add more color. If you want to just bump around the edges so you get concentrated color down the bottom, I'll kind of show you how that fades and blends in. Oops. Okay, let's. I'm going to continue coloring and moving this around a little bit, and I might speed this up so that I can fit my video in the time that I need to be allowed. So just stay with me and keep watching.
getting ready to do some assembly. Um, I have cut up my back panel because I'm going to be putting my bird on here and I wanted to kind of give him something to look at so it's some visual interest to the right. Um, also I've cut him out and I've um, not used or not cut out his feet or the little hair that's at the top. I'm going to go ahead and stamp it onto this panel but before I do that I'm going to go ahead and edge the sides of my bird with my brown pen. This will just finish it off and make it look better. I like to kind of hold the pen from the back side and I'm using the dark brown ink. This is Nugget or Nougat, however you would like to say that, like coupon and coupon. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and edge these around. If I need to get in the front, I can get in the front. Turned out really super cute. Uh, and I've also used the Tim Holtz words here and it's going to say friendship heals everything because he just kind of looks like so sad. So I'm going to finish this up and I'm going to stamp my bird onto my panel so that I can get his hair and his feet. And I'm going to finish this up and I'll show you my final card. This is how my bird turned out. I really love the scratch marks from the gesso and how all the color blended together. And my background of my card, I really like the contrast of the colors. It almost looks like a little bit of a wood grain. Thanks for hanging in here with me, and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and thanks for watching.